yeah, he's getting ready to take a fight. So yeah, Nathan, it's uh, it, it's not about who's winning. We're just looking at like the decision making, and we're looking at, um, we're just we're just looking at the difference between what a white belt role looks like and a black belt looks um role looks like. But it has nothing to do with like who wins more because that, that's a dumb question. We know the black belt's gonna win. But here we go, Keith. Why don't you uh, start talking us through this? We got Lachlan. I feel like Lachlan wants that knee pin for the Robin Kamara, but he just got his back taken <laughs> going for it. I was just <laughs> He learned the Roland Kimura randomly and then, like, decided, you know what, never mind the rest of the Roland Kimura. I'm just going to do this and try to get past the legs all the time. And he's still kind of messing around with it and figuring it out. Oh. Triangle set up by Philip. Yeah, Lachlan just a little bit undisciplined with his arms. It was a yeah. good try to, you know, he, he tried to sit up and, and, and to that sweep, and you know, he's finding himself in a triangle here. A wrong side triangle locked up. What is your play from here when you've, when you've got the long si wrong side triangle locked up? Uh, I like what Phillip's trying to do. And maybe start trying to make some sort of connection to my left shin to try to swim my arm around just to maybe pry the arm out if I am on the wrong side. Looks like he has the, he has the right side now. Yep, finish. I do tend to play a similar BMAC game off that uh, wrong side. I I'm really happy that tap happened quickly. I hate when we see, like, somebody stuck in a uh, position like that for, like, two, three minutes. Because yeah. to me, it's like, that's not what we're trying to look at. We're trying yeah. to see what the overall role looks like. I want to see a bunch of different scenarios. Oh, it looks like he's thinking about uh, that rolling Kimura again. Yeah, it, it, Lachlan's, like, he, he needs to start building, like, more connections, or at least just like forcing a knee cut just to kind of create some other uh, movements from Philip. And so the white belt in question we're looking at, we're going to be seeing Philip. So Philip's on bottom now. Lachlan is visiting from Ireland. We're going to be looking at Philip's decision making versus Brandon. Man, he did a real good job right there. I mean, we saw him get the mount position. He got swept off, yep. which was a mistake, but he found the triangle during that sweep. He's got a sweet mustache. He does have a sweet mustache. Mm. Why do you think guys go to close guard? Like, what is a white belt thinking when they go to close guard? As in, like, the as the, the guy attacking from close guard? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, why do you think Philip chose to go to full guard right um, there? I don't know. Like, it, people first come to jiu-jitsu classes, they learn an arm bar from guard and a triangle from guard. So maybe they just think that's that's a place where they can hold, slow down the match, and try set up those submissions instead of having to worry about the other person trying to pass their guard. The close guard, to me, is it's a very safe option. Yeah. There's zero submissions that can happen from there. And it really limits the mobility. And we saw Lachlan trying to use the knee slice, and he was making a little bit better headway. It's like the third or fourth knee slice he tried. He passed for a split second. We saw Philip get his guard right back, but I think he was tired of dealing oh. with the mobility. And, yeah, I was going to say this. You know, he already had success with the triangle, and I think yeah. he was thinking he could find uh, another submission from his closed guard. Honestly, that was that was really good decision. Like he already had a submission in the triangle, so he knew he could get it, um, or at least he's already finished one triangle. So he puts himself in a position to find another. Yeah, if he can do uh, I think he's probably we're gonna pro probably going to see him go to the close guard again just to. Uh, he's on a leg now. Yeah, that was a very poor decision. Yeah, I'd, uh, it's it, it's hard to control the the outside ashy position if you're not like really solid with that uh, with understanding the outside heel hook stuff. Yeah, that was this is definitely the biggest mistake he's made in this role. That was a poor outside Ashi attempt, and now he's holding on to it too long. He needs to start uh, framing the cross shoulder and try to get his guard back. I know Lachlan's not too savvy with leg locks. I spent about a month teaching leg locks in uh in the gym, but he's not too savvy with leg locks and he's still already crushing that position. It's such an easy position to naturally find your way to a crushing sort of a passing position when someone plays outside Ashi and they're not great at uh, keeping you off balance. 
Mm, here we go. Lachlan's first big Guess success. Can you keep him flat? I think that's why we saw, again, Phillip go to the close guard is because he felt that Lachlan was getting closer and closer to passing. Lachlan can get a bit too heavy on his right side as he starts playing these positions, and sometimes, oh, I thought Philip was looking for a buggy choke there for a sec. It's good framing. Good framing to get his guard back. Always one of the techniques I'm watching, like how well does a white belt their guard they've been passed how easily can they find their guard again yeah this is a smart decision so yeah. really good decision making here from Philip. slow the match down again yeah I mean, he's gonna pop that triangle up Lachlan's spending way too much time on his knees when he's passing it's okay to do but there's times where like the close guard is a bit of a, a threat and he's just not getting that one knee up in the middle well and we only saw one pass attempt the entire time True. Lachlan's still struggling in this heat. He's, uh, he's off to get his Crocs and get a <laughs> bottle of water. Sit down and take a few rounds out, maybe. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Jeff Smith knows, dude. Jeff's been down here. He's like, it looks steamy <laughs> in there. And you're right, dude. There's a storm coming in, so it's just super humid in there. It was hot earlier today, but it rained super hard. So while the heat has went down, the humidity is up. Okay, so we're going to see Brandon versus the white belt next. Dang, dude, Lachlan's definitely struggling. He's like, oh, no. Yeah. Okay, so BMI and Lachlan now. And right off the bat, um, we saw two attempts here from Lachlan. We saw a rolling Kimura, and we saw a bunch of knee slice attempts. I think the big thing right there was a lack of confidence. He's already rolled with BMAC. He knows what to expect. And you can see that with white belts. Like, after you've crushed them a couple of times, they are much more willing. Like, he just kind of fell back there. Yeah. That wasn't a sweep. That was just a lack of confidence. Yeah. I'm going to fall to my back and already just – I'm going to go ahead and start playing defense. <laughs> Looks like Brandon, you know, I said, Brandon's got a bunch of different styles he could play. Looks like he's about to play the steamroller. Because that be was a... Uh, <laughs> he might be playing the steamroller. <laughs> is this good for Lachlan? Oh. Oh, this is going to be a long six minutes for this point. <laughs> well, and, and an immediate difference right there. Brandon comes to the mount position, and he gets a triangle. But he finishes on top, so it was a much cleaner version. Phillip got rolled off top. He had to find the triangle during the transition. It's not often you see BMAC lose in position like that for something, for any sort of triangle attack. It's either a clean attack or else he's, he's staying on top. If you're going against an underbelt, particularly blue, like white or blue belt, and you're a black belt, you pretty much don't lose position unless they do, like, are crazy explosive. Like, there's a huge size difference. But even then, you know, you don't see a lot of black belts losing position to lower belts. No. Yeah, Lachlan needs to. Uh, oh, that's, that's <laughs> <how we're laughs> not the move. <laughs> not the, trying to move of the day on the coach who was teaching it. Probably not the move. That doesn't mean it doesn't work, Lachlan. It just did not work there. <laughs> yeah, tough. Dude, I was going to say, like, Lachlan needs to, like, try and slow this down. He needs to spend a little bit more time. He needs to even play, like, a little bit more. Um, well, I think we're going to see a baby twister attempt here. Uh, uh, yeah, probably. Uh, I think Lachlan's almost uh, accepting the fact that this is what's going to happen to him for the next few minutes. Yeah, you see O'Brandon. He had that rear naked choke, and he let it up because he wants this baby twister. Yeah. So it's a movement Brandon's been playing a lot with. Okay. Oh. BMI may be switching to a rear triangle sort of game. Maybe not. No, he's going, he's going full Nelson. He's going to bring his legs up here. He's going to bring that, uh, that kind of oh, rubber that rear, sort of yeah. stuff that he's been messing around with. That oh, rear. no. Tapped early. Never mind. And I understand, Lachlan. My shoulders do not yeah, no, no, have no, no. any I, flexibility. I, I, I got this one and this one and this one and this one. That's, that, that's my flexibility <laughs> right now. I'm doing great, coach. Mm.
pretty crazy because, like, Lachlan didn't look too bad rolling against Phillip. He had a couple of passes in there. His big, big mistakes were those two triangles. One was a nice transition by Phillip into it off the sweep attempt by Lachlan, but then the other was just poor discipline in the closed guard. And but just, like, little mistakes by Phillip that were leading to Lachlan kind of getting the better position sometimes, whereas, like, BMX not making those same mistakes. Nah, this is, like I said, this is just a steamroll. I'm, I'm much more interested in the white versus purple belt round and then the black belt versus purple belt round. Yeah. Because with this round, I always tell people, like, I don't really judge people on how they roll with Brandon, especially if it's a guy like this that's been training a year, you know. It's just he's so outmatched. and He's outmatched everywhere. He literally has zero advantages. And I could watch him roll with Phillip three more times, and me and you could write a game plan. We could help him get, like, better. Yep. We can't help him get no, better from no, this. No, 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 this no. is just a, like, ah, sorry, man, this is just part of the journey yeah. <laughs> type moments. Like it just, but it's it's good from in a sense that like I I like having at least like one video of me and you rolling or me and BMAC rolling or something just something to take home even if I get absolutely murdered for that entire round it's still just nice to have that and look back at see what kind of attacks you were doing see what I was doing that put me in those positions all this kind of stuff so I think even if you get steamrolled it's good to have this to look back on. Well, the big. Big difference besides the whole white versus black belt thing is Lachlan is just he's just giving up top position. He's not yeah. fighting for it at all. No, he's not. I mean, like he's just falling over. He's yeah. not trying to base. He's not trying to. Um, and that's like the big thing I would talk to him about is like, man, when you're getting just steamrolled, like you got to fight yeah. to stay in the game and stay on top, which is strange. Like uh, the gym that we come from back home is so point uh, based that. Uh, he was finding it weird when he got over here that a lot of people weren't putting the same effort into guard retention. And then he was getting beat by guys whose guard he's w he was passing. So he was getting kind of confused by that. And I think uh, um, it, I was expecting to see more of an effort to try stay on top. But I think he's kind of just defeated right now. He knows that BMAC is just going to run through him. He has had a good run of just going against like purple belts, brown belts, black belts, purple belts, brown belts, black belts. Mostly just brown and black, brown, black, and then the odd purple. Yeah. I think he's got to roll with two white belts now, Philip being one of them <laughs> in the week that he's been here. Yeah, the gym with the history that, that ours has, there, there is a lot of colored belts. And it can be, uh, it's super overwhelming for a white belt when they're visiting because there's just. You're not going to have those rest rounds. You're not going to have very many rounds that you're going to end up leaving feeling good about yourself. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. So we're going to move on now to Philip. We're going to go back to Philip, and it's going to be Philip versus Dennis. <laughs> I'm really excited for this round. Dennis, a purple belt. He competed in season one of the PGF as a yep. white belt, but he wrestled in college. He's uh, he's really committed himself to learning the bottom game. He's comfortable pulling guard now. He can play in the leg locks. And then we've got Phillip, who uh, looked really good in the first round. I haven't spent enough time rolling with Dennis since I got here. I've rolled with him maybe twice, but he's got some like weird side control escapey sort of stuff that he's been it's tough to roll with Dennis just because everybody wants to roll with Dennis. He's he's that uh <laughs> he's that guy that he's just fun to roll with. Yeah, he's, he's very a um around. It's like he's gonna give you some good reactions, but you can still kinda mess around. Like you can still try some of the the stuff you want to work and still get some good reactions from him. Okay. Dennis is trying to shake off that butterfly. I think he already has. He's already starting to he's in half guard now. Yeah, big mistake by Phillip. That was just really poor gripping from the half guard. Put himself behind. Nice job, though, framing, framing Dennis out. He's finding his way back to the knee shield. Dennis going right back to this twister pass. Is there a high score for a man of subs? No mercy. No, definitely not. No high score. 
Although Scott has hit some impressive numbers. <laughs> Slipping onto that Dars. Oh, onto the Mars. Oh, he lost mm. it. Oh, he got a bit greedy. Got very greedy. Yeah. One one of the big reasons. I'm I'm not the biggest fan of the the Mars technique right there, where you're or the far side. Um, the falling down. Yeah, the one. falling down where you're coming underneath, especially like when it's super sweaty like this. Dennis just zero weight on and allowed Philip to um, just allowed him to slip out right there. But when you hit it, man, it looks sexy. It does. <laughs> It looks sexy. So we're seeing Philip, um, and typically you see this with white belts, right? Like they're comfortable either on top or bottom. And Philip did all his work in the first round pretty much on bottom. Yep. And now he's doing all this round on bottom. Yep. But now he's got Dennis on top who actually knows how to control the positions better. And he's struggling. That pass was beautiful. Yep. Really nice pass right there. Okay, Philip's staying disciplined with his frame. Got that right arm. He's got that elbow. You see how the elbow's in Dennis's hip right there. Oh, Dennis, though, starting to make leeway. Oh, Dennis in a nice triangle set up there from Mint. Just got to pop that booty, give us a little twerk, and that should be it. Mm. Oh, he could just go in it and just pull the head. Yeah, that's yeah, what I would maybe. do. Maybe, yeah. He gets it that way. Should have finished that on top, though. Yeah, definitely. How, how would you? You were talking about that, the booty. What's, um, what's up with the booty? Uh, Dennis kind of like, he, he was leaning forward, but his hips were still off his heels. Whereas, the, like, so that space in the triangle was actually still open. Whereas if he sat back on his heels, he would have been able to close that space. He almost kind of just like hit it with a little twerky like this and then sit back into it. For more sexy demonstrations like that, go to my only fat now, my joke. <laughs> the Mars is supreme and glorious. Debatable. It definitely it looks is glorious. sexy when you hit it, uh, for sure. Some guys, uh some guys definitely got it. Nice back take by Dennis using that Kamora grip. Zero offense. We haven't seen uh, Philip initiate any offense against Dennis. Philip on top. Yeah, you see, he just F Philip's looking a lot, uh, a lot more hesitant in this round. Even just when he was like kind of coming up on top there, he just didn't really seem like he had an idea of what he was supposed to be doing. Yeah, and. Went back to his guard. I mean, it's just that's where he's comfortable with. And when a higher belt is, you know, asking you questions, sometimes you don't have the answer for him, and you just go to where you're comfortable. Dennis sitting back on an ankle lock. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that uh, by Dennis. It's no, too that was, that was way too sweaty in there for for straight ankle lock attempts. Unless you're gonna like really use them to try and pass. Better look at the leg now. Yeah. I don't like the toe hold attempt from those sort of positions. It just kind of turns their knee out where they want to go anyway. Yeah, it's going to be an impossible finish right yeah. there. Zero, zero um, bend in the knee. Okay, he's in with the closed guard. This has been um, the best position for him so far, and he's looking to work. That shoulder coach. Yeah. How do you feel? Like, wh what would you tell uh, Philip right here? Well, I've just been throwing the same, spamming the same armbar setup from there repeatedly, even when it probably wasn't the time, just trying to learn about it. But uh, I think just controlling that shoulder crunch, getting their shoulders stuck and glued to your chest, and then starting to try to move him around left and right just to see where you can find his, uh, where he's off balance. Big mistake by Philip right there. He's trying to get wrist control, and he's trying to force. His first round, we saw him finish two triangles. But he went for the triangle, and he gave up his guard, which allowed Dennis to get into deep half guard pass, and, and he uses that same pass right into the mount. Got Dennis with a nice underhook. 
pass around. So what, now we have BMR and Dennis? Yep. yep. So now I got our black belt versus purple belt here. Drew says, you don't see a lot of genuinely great darsers that don't at least have a decent marsh. Yeah, I'm, I, pr I definitely yeah, probably agree with that. Yeah, that's true. Do you do a lot of darses? Um, I started practicing them a lot when I was back home, but it was more so just because I knew that uh, I felt comfortable with my guillotines, arm and guillotines, anacondas, but I just felt like I was missing the dars, so I started messing around with it, but it's not something that I'm actively going for nice base by Dennis right there yeah and that's the big difference right we saw white belts they just fall over right there Dennis found his center of gravity he floated with Brandon's movement and found his base again just be back in on a deep go go clinch here already one of the three power positions from the rubber guard I yeah. mean you get that go go clinch start locking that Ooh. up might not have it. It's sweaty. Yeah. It's sweaty. That's what I'll say. It's submissions are tougher to lock up in this room during the summer months. Dennis needs to be very careful though. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that roll was gonna happen. BMQ is that as an entry to the legs. Just too sweaty for especially straight ankle. Like very yeah. tough to get straight ankles or heel hooks right now. Be Max just did a good job of just keeping the control on the head there as Dennis went to move forward. Yeah, and again this Dars. He's got one arm and, and Brandon does such a good job of controlling posture. And he's trying to open that elbow. He felt Dennis going for that really neat um, defense where he's going to you know, try and gable grip around his leg and open that space. But Brandis is going into this Japanese necktie. Dennis defends. But oh, no, that's deep. Yeah, yeah he's going to finish that. Finish that. Do you have any use for the Japanese necktie in your game? Man, the Dap Japanese necktie is amazing. Um, man, I've got so many things I could say about that right now, like between like Darces and and um, that that would be about thirty minute combo. So. <laughs> nice, Dennis trying to get up into his wrestling. Nice little Granby right there by Dennis. One of the big advantages that uh. I'm not saying every American has, but it, it seems to be um, fairly common to see someone like Dennis who has the wrestling experience, and then those guys are not as likely to want to go to their back at all. I know Dennis, for example, is a, he's a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. He has worked from his back, but uh, like oh, back home, we don't have that same sort of base to start off with jiu-jitsu. There's the baby twister. That is the baby twister. Have you hit any baby twisters? Uh, I've hit like one baby twister in my life. I've never tried one. I did it just after seeing Orchard hit it on a oh, yeah, Kieran yeah. Davern. Yeah. I was like, I want to try that again. That was nice. I'm going to have to go back and look at that setup because um, he just ended up with Dennis's arm underneath him. Where we saw him try, he was, um, who did he have? He had Lachlan. Was it yeah. Lachlan? Yeah, he had Lachlan, and he ended up having to, to switch and, and go into trying to work like the rear rubber guard. For whatever reasons, Dennis' arm just appeared perfectly yeah. right behind his back. Maybe a heel transition. A little octopus play right here by Brandon. Yeah. Oh, nice sweep. And that makes it even tougher with Dennis's wrestling background to win those wrestle ups. Brandon did a good job right there. Finds himself on top. Got to be very careful right here. Yeah, 
He's trying to force. This is a 50-50 position. He's trying to force. Yeah. Brandon's looking to get in on this, but he's got to be very careful because Brandon's going to flip it on him. Oh, a baby twister and – I was going to say a baby twister and – Baby twisters don't get the burritos, but this oh, oh kamikaze. Yep, uh, kamikaze calf slicer by Mike. Brandon's got super thick calves, so when he comes over top of that kamikaze, it's so tight. I've had so many like more people than I'm comfortable with writing to me telling me about how muscly Bmax calves are. <laughs> Dude, Brandon genetically. You know, in Zoolander, how they have, like, different <laughs> body part models? Brandon would be a calf model in Zoolander. <laughs> a calf model. Yeah, like, they would never show his face. Uh, or his knees or anything yeah. else, but the calves are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon's on, on his chin strap. Brandon was telling me the other day that he thinks uh, his chin strap guillotine might be his best move now. Hmm. He does feel that. That was one of the biggest differences I've noticed with his game since coming back here is uh I used to not really have a – I don't think he would have finished me with a guillotine back then, but now he's definitely finished me with some guillotines. Dennis looking good, though. Yep. We saw Lachlan just get absolutely obliterated. And so – now we're seeing Dennis is hanging in the game. He's been submitted, what, twice? Baby Twister. Oh, Dar has been submitted three times. So Dars, Baby Twister, and Calf Crush. Yep. Uh, oh, he's still got that foot in there. Uh, and the round's over. Dennis did well. I know he got caught a few times, but he did well to not get just yeah. steamrolled. Very... Um, very good transitions. Dennis is the type of guy that, like, he he looks good no matter who he's going against. Very good at scrambling. Can play top or bottom. And, and that's what a D1 – or he didn't wrestle D1. He wrestled D2, I think. But that's what a college-level wrestler should look like at Purple Belt. They yeah. should be able to play the guard. They should be able to play off their back. Ah, we're going to see this final round here. So we're going to see now Philip, the white belt that we were using in this experiment, go against Brandon. And we saw him get – he didn't get overwhelmed by Dennis, but he definitely was was outclassed. Are we seeing that, or is BMX just finito? I no, think I think we're – oh, I guess Brandon might be done. Putting oh. on the shoes, man. Oh, no, he's getting closer. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, no, I'm nervous. Oh, see, uh, I was looking in the top left, dude. Woo. So I was still seeing Brandon <laughs> put on his slippers. I was like, wait, what are you talking about? He's getting closer. All right, Brandon catching his breath. Woo! Is this one on? That was good. How'd it go in here? It was good. Do we have a good uh, good turnout? Yeah, I mean, 50 plus. Oh, nice. Yeah. Got 56 right now. Um, yeah, it, it was interesting. Um, I think that it, it's tough, right? Like, we saw Philip go against Lachlan, then we saw Philip go against Dennis, and we saw you do the same thing. Um, the, the skill gap between I guess the one of the most interesting questions is was the skill gap diff, uh, bigger between Dennis and Philip or Brandon and Dennis? Go ahead. Uh, oh, it, between Brandon and Dennis, bigger skill gap by far. It, it just like as you were saying a while ago, BMAC could have played those games, uh, those matches like a lot of different ways, whereas like those guys had to play a very specific way just to not die as many times as they could have. Like, Lachlan got 
Lachlan was like he he stopped fighting for top position. He started accepting. Yeah, he sweeps. gave up a little bit. Yeah. So. Uh, His heart died on him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think he just knew what was coming. Yeah. And, uh, I don't think he he felt like he had any sort of ac- uh, um, answer or even an option to throw at you. Well, you could almost make the argument though that. Dennis could have played it too against Brandon. Like Dennis threw a bunch of different things at Brandon as well. Yeah, and he was just much more able to. We saw right at the beginning, Brandon try to sweep, and both Lachlan and Philip were just falling over. Yeah. I mean, neither one of those guys fought for the top position at yeah. all. Um, especially Philip. Philip just any chance he got, he went right to his back. Where Dennis, we saw him float, find his base, find that center of gravity, and stay on top. Um, where Philip, we we really just saw three techniques, right? Yep. I mean, we saw him close guard. And he was hunting for triangles. And that was when things were working for him with Lachlan, at least. But the one time he went to try to go for the legs, it was just a just a poor decision. Well, we saw it against Dennis. You know, He went to the movement that he had just tapped two times in his first round. He had tapped Lachlan twice with the triangle. He went for it against Dennis, and Dennis immediately passed to half guard and then passed him and, and was right back into the mount. So I, it's tough because, you know, I, I think a lot of people – you, know, you say, I think, that the biggest skill gap is the difference between a white belt and a blue belt because a white belt's a guy that could just have been training a week. Yeah, as far as, like, one belt to the next, white yeah. to blue belt is a huge skill gap. And then it would be the skill gap between different levels of black belt, I think, would probably be the next second largest. Yeah, because your hobby is black belt. There's black belts like me. And there's black belts like G- JT Torres, you know what I mean? It's two I, different things. I don't know if I'd put you in JT. I would say more just your hobbyist black belt that's been tra- – um, the guy, the um, you know, the black belt that got it from uh, from the Gracies, that was the TV star. Oh, Ed O'Neill. Ed O'Neill. Al Bundy. He's the great example. Like, okay. Twice a week, that's the skill gap, I would say. Maybe I'm in the middle between Al Bundy and JT Torres. <laughs> uh, you're probably closer to, to Al Bundy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. But, Brandon, you do this humble thing sometimes. I'm like, dude, you're a world-class black belt, dude. Shut up. You're not, <laughs> you're I, not Al Bundy, dog. I do, I do think my, um, my movements – are are good. I think my knowledge and like depth of understanding on the game is like is really really good. But definitely athletically, and then even just my cardio, you know, to be able to keep up with some of those really really good players. I think I can get out and be competitive with just about anybody. But ooh man, some of those guys are just so good. Oh man, we have uh, so. Here he says he's a brand new white belt. He says some beautiful jujitsu, and I'm guessing he just became a member oh, of BMAC nice. Academy. He's excited to learn. Nice, dude. Can't wait to have you in. I'm gonna do some. Uh, we're gonna do like a group film study a little later this week, just for the members. So, those of you that are on uh, BJJ365, just go to BrandonMC.Ninja if you're not. Sign up for that BJJ365. But we're gonna do some members only film study stuff later this week. So big takeaways for you. You're watching in, you know, Lachlan, uh, a guy that's kind of a student underneath you, came from Ireland, is here visiting, and you're watching Philip, who you haven't even rolled with, and um, then Dennis. What, what were your big takeaways from those three guys? Just with the with, with the Lachlan stuff, I I definitely feel like just I need, I need to have a, just like a little chat with him and just kind of talk about just fighting to stay on top position. Like there's there's times where he was just giving up when he was still in the fight. Even if he thought he thought he wasn't in the fight, like he just had to just like maybe post a bit and just make a bit more of an effort. So, I'd like to see more of an effort from uh, Lockman just to try stay on top. And although that's hard to do when you're going against BMAC, when all you've been doing since you got here is rolling with brown and black belts. Oh all no the time. doubt, yeah. So that he he kind of knows what he's in for. So I, I'm sure he's kind of going in there a bit defeated sometimes. But um, yeah. As for uh, Philip Den- Philip and Dennis, I think Philip. Showed some uh, good movements, especially when he was going against Dennis, but then he, uh, or when he was going against Lockdown. But then he also made some like just silly mistakes, like trying to play some like outside Ashy uh, without having any sort of like good offense uh, from that position. Um. Yeah. So does quitting look the same at every level, right? Like if if somebody quits, because mm-hmm. because we saw Lachlan kind of quit, yeah. right? And he just was falling over. Brandon was doing the like. He was falling over, and we saw Philip. You know, he didn't. The he uh, against Dennis. I mean, he's just he's falling over. He was accepting defensively. We didn't see that from Dennis. No, definitely not. Dennis definitely didn't quit. But but does does that look the same at every level? Because everybody has that in them. It's like falling to your back, the quitting. The last time mm. I 
the last time I competed, I, I feel like I quit. And I feel like I got to the point where the way it was scored, it was like Polaris style where they do it in three rounds. And I feel like I was up on the, the first two rounds. And then as it was getting towards the end, I became afraid of giving out anything else in case I just like got caught in those moments when I was feeling a bit kind of like, okay, right, there's, there's not too long left. I've given, like I, I feel like kind of drained. And I definitely feel like I got to the point where I just kind of coasted a bit at times where I should have just like gave that extra little push and just like pushed for it. So... I do think I just played it safe in certain positions and I wasn't necessarily just falling over. I wasn't just like accepting passes and stuff like that, but I still think I was just playing it a bit too safe and that was my quitting in that moment. Yeah, I think it looks different for everybody and I think it depends on their game too, but like, I mean, if you just fall back and give position, I don't know, man, that's not, that's not good. You know, that, that's a definitely a, a strong sign that you're giving up the ghost. <laughs> uh, Lachlan from the chat. He wants to you to talk about. He's asking about that um, the the deep half you're playing with with, mm. um, with no. It's not deep half. Yeah, I've been calling empty it empty deep half. I've been calling it zero half. Oh, zero half. What, yeah. yeah. Um, man, it's it's uh it's not a very difficult concept, but it it's a pretty um, finesse movement though. To be honest with you, so it would be hard for me to describe it to you. I can tell you that. Uh, the the best time to play around with that is like when you go to deep half guard, but then they get an underhook anyway. Take that. So like I'm in deep half guard and I got the hip right here, and then they underhook this arm like they're gonna try to kimura or maybe slide into like a rear triangle on me. Whatever arm they have underhooked, I'll just go under the ankle with that one. Then I'll slide off the hip down to the knee, and then I lever the knee and the ankle back this way as I turn to my knees. Um, and sometimes they they catch their base and they sit like they're trying to mount, but because I've got that arm weaved through. I can kick them up and pitch them over, which I think I did that to Dennis during our round. I think that was Dennis. Well, somebody I did that to. I can't remember exactly who it was. Yeah, and it's a position you've been playing a lot. Yeah, um, I love it. So, Hage, he wants to know, when can we see a video of Brandon rolling with everyone in the gym? Oh, man, you pretty much can. I mean, I roll every Thursday night live here. Um, if you're on my website at brandonmc.ninja and you're – in the Jedi archive, there's like hundreds and hundreds of videos of me rolling with tons of people, even people from outside the gym, like Chewy or John Buck. There's a video of me and Eddie Bravo rolling up there. Like there's a ton, ton of me, me with visitors. And then if you just want to see me get uh, basically tortured for 30 straight rounds, uh, we got a new video up on the channel as of about 10 days or two weeks ago, something like that, of me rolling 30 consecutive rounds with all the guys here. So you can definitely get that. I'm not. I'm not hiding in the background. I'm out here putting the, all the good and the bad and the ugly out for everybody to see. Plus, in that round that's on your uh, the Jedi archive with you and Eddie, someone makes someone fart, and there's only one way to find out who, who makes who fart. Somebody gets twisted and somebody farts, and there's only one way to know who's who. There's only one way to know. Yeah. Still, Iller says, back from injury, and I hit the ham sandwich sweep this week. Oh, Super shoot. Super excited. That's nice. dope. That ham sandwich is money, dude. I've been hitting a uh, punch choke off the bottom of the ham sandwich. Like, when I lace up the ham sandwich and they try to keep pressing forward anyway and get up around my head, I should be coming in around the top <laughs> with a punch choke. I did it, like, two or three times the other night. Stupid. And then I got that arm in punch choke that I'm doing a little bit right there, too. It's not off the ham sandwich. It's the same style of position. Drew says he's finally started hitting that magic carpet sweep. Oh, oh that, that black magic. Friend. That black I magic that. sign. I love it. The magic carpet ride is a different, that's an escape from side control. That's a different uh, movement. So he, he's talking about that black magic mount reversal, though, for sure. Yeah. That Drew, I think that's my favorite move in jujitsu is that. I love to do that. I like to go to, I, I really feel so confident with that that I almost consider, I, I consider it a sweep. Like, I have that much confidence in it. Getting out from that position is pretty dope. Yeah, zero half is a good name for it. So, thinking back uh, about these rolls, as we saw you steamroll, absolute steamroll Lachlan. Yeah. You probably tapped him, what, 12 times? I mean, uh, give I or know. take, you know, 10 give or take a, a couple. Um, you just went in there and, and you hit everything, right? But then we saw Dennis, we saw three submissions. We saw Darce choke. Mm, we saw. Yeah, I switched off the Peruvian. I went Darce, yeah. Peruvian, and then I. I slipped that Darce back in on him. We saw a baby twister, and then oh, we yeah. saw a calf crush. Yeah. So in those three, I, I would say 
it's tough to kind of look at, like, how do you look, like, if you were going to study, do you pick any value in the white belt submissions, like any offense, um, like, movements against a white belt? And you're, like, trying to learn. Do I put any value in those? Yeah, like, would oh, you? Oh, definitely. So the tra- training is really just about studying the, po- the different positions, right? So uh, one of the things about studying positions that's so important that I think gets overlooked a lot is your entry strategy and your exit strategy. And so you can get in, and with the white belts, you can put them in positions pretty easily. And so you can choose the position that the fight happens in, and you can study your entries and exits on the position that you're trying to get better at. So like for the ham sandwich, I start it way down the food chain, and I get, because generally if they've been training for a year or so, they kind of all are going to move the same way. But a white belt might do, or a blue belt might do the right thing, quote unquote, but they do a really large, they have a large window. It's big movement, right? And so that a big movement gives you time to, uh, to adjust and to see it and to spot it and, and to get, get everything set up just right. And then you can kind of either do it to them or they escape it and you study it, the escape and the exit of it. But as you move up the food chain, those reactions, those movements become smaller and smaller. The window for the success of the move becomes smaller and smaller. So it's not that uh, that there's no value in training with white belts. I actually think there's tremendous value in training with white belts. In a lot of ways, I feel like the white and blue belts are my most important training partners. So looking at that baby twister. That's my new, fa- that's my new uh, yeah. boo-boo from the back. I'm back to playing the back again. Yeah, so when you're hunting for the baby twister, wh- what are what are kind of the three steps if you're breaking it down into to three words or three steps like you usually do? All right, word. Uh, body triangle. Flat back. So the opponent starts to slide his back. He's trying to scrape me, and he slides off the side. But I still got the body triangle. So body triangle, flat back, trap the arm. So I zombie through and get the arm underneath me. And then I go hip up and get above him to crank that finish. So I guess four steps. It would be body triangle, flat back. Uh, what was the other one that I said? And get the arm behind him. Oh, yeah, arm behind, zombie the arm, and then hip up. Get, get your height above his so that you can drive power through your hips. All right, last question. Okay. We're right at 51 minutes. Can we see you hit a buggy choke sometime? Oh, not likely. Not <laughs> because I'm anti-buggy choke, but I just I don't know. I'm not good enough at it yet. So, uh, like, if I run, all right, Brandon, you're going to run uh, six straight rounds with white belts tonight, I might could get a buggy choke. I still couldn't guarantee it, though. <laughs> I just I don't have that movement in my game. It's new to me. So, yeah, probably not, to be honest with you. <laughs> Oh, the poll for next week's video. Okay, so Keelan says that he made a poll here. Next time we want to see Matt Scaff roll while Brandon talks, that's 44%. Mm. So, Scaff, you're going to be on the hook next week. Okay, I was going to say, man, I don't know, man. I feel like I need to see, like, higher people want to see that, dude. Forget me out there, roll, dude. Well, I mean, you were up against the ham sandwich was one of the choices. Uh-huh. Ham sandwich did pretty good. But I mean, yeah, you, you got 28%. You yeah, 27%. Travis roll. Nobody wants to see Travis roll, dude. Seven percent. They're like, yeah. I don't know what Travis is. <laughs> what I is a Travis? You. I hear you. What I is Travis? You. Yeah, I'll get out there. I'll give you guys a few rounds next week. Oh, 